Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to talk about quick surface light and specifically auto freeform. Now, recently, we did a video talking about freeform modeling for quick surface versus fusion. We looked at the process for each of those to figure out how they worked, and we showed the benefits of using something like quick surface over using fusion when you're trying to create your new designs off of a scan data. What we're going to talk about in this video is a way that we can use the auto freeform tool and see what kind of benefits or drawbacks we have based on that versus our new freeform option inside of Quick Surface. So to get started, the first thing we should understand is that this tool is in both Quick Surface Lite as well as Quick Surface Pro. Quick Surface Pro opens up the feature aligned options, which gives you the ability to create a freeform model with symmetry off of your scan data based on a symmetry plane, as well as a few other options that aren't available in the light version. But the first thing that we need to understand is that generally we don't want to do this to an entire mesh model. And this is really the problem is because it's going to wrap the freeform model around all the different contours, any holes or issues that we have in the scan itself. These are going to basically cause big problems in our freeform surface. So the way that we approach this problem is by dividing up our scan into different areas that we want to use for our freeform surfaces. The way that we do this, we start with edit scan. I'm going to use the magic wand tool and select the front of my design. And here we can use the degree slider to determine how much of this that we want to incorporate. Keep in mind, we can still manipulate the original mesh or we can cut or adjust this as needed. But for right now, the main thing that we want is the front of this headlight. We're going to use copy and create and then close this. Copy and create will keep the original mesh and allow me to have a copied version of that front face. From here, generally what I would suggest is we do a little bit of cleanup and processing before we try to use our freeform tool. To do that, we're going to go to scan data, and I'm going to begin by taking a look at some of these options. We've got re-polygonize, we've got reduce noise, and we've got reduce polygons. One thing that we need to keep in mind is we can use these tools over and over again, but there is likely going to be a best case or best workflow where you decide to use one before the other. For example, if we use re-polygonize and we increase this to say two millimeter spacing and say okay, when we go in to reduce the polygons and we take a look at the mesh wireframe, we've already gotten rid of quite a few of these polygons. So what we're doing now is we're reducing an already redone or readjusted mesh. You can see that the density is higher in the areas where we have the curvature changes and around the outside, but the larger, more flat areas have a lower polygon count. What we can do from here is reduce it down even further to say 367 triangles, which leaves a very low resolution polygon. Now, this is a problem because we are going to deviate away from the original mesh too far if we use these tools too aggressively. So I'm gonna select cancel, and I'm gonna go back to this reduce noise option. Once again, I wanna show the mesh wireframe. I'm gonna go through three iterations and preview. What this will allow us to do is have the software adjust the position of these triangles. If there are minor angle changes, if we zoom in here, if there are minor angle changes between triangles, it's going to raise or lower them to average them out. If we preview this, you can see they're slowly spreading out and smoothing, but it's gonna keep this the same general shape. We're gonna say, okay, I don't, not really worried about keeping the original mesh, but now we've got a pretty clean version of this that we can use for our freeform modeling. Back in our main tab, we've got auto freeform. Now, one of the benefits here is that we can choose the number of quads that we want. So I'm gonna to go to custom. Remember that we were looking at around a thousand triangles and I'm gonna set this a little bit lower. I only want a hundred quads because the freeform model doesn't need nearly as many faces or quads for that to work. So I'm gonna select preview and take a look at the result. One thing that you're gonna see here is that the layout of what's the actual NURB surface, the converted freeform model, is gonna be very inconsistent. And this is gonna be true across the board. Generally, this is what's gonna happen with a tool like this. If we take a look at the heat map or the deviation, if we have any problems, we can always go through and increase the resolution, say 150, preview and see if we can get closer. Now, even if we can't get really close, we don't wanna go crazy with putting a ton of quads here because it's just gonna make it harder to deal with downstream. But what we can do is set it back to 100, say okay, 
And now we have the ability to actually go in and edit that freeform model. If there are any error points on the sides, we can click the option to automatically insert another loop. And now because we've got the option to snap, we can just simply go through and manipulate this and move them around on our mesh directly. So this gives us the ability again to get away from those noisy sections on the edges. We can double click and pull entire edges in if we need to. Let's go ahead and double click this edge and pull this one in. And we can also turn on our heat map to see how close we are. At this stage in the game, we could always use tools like increase resolution and get closer and closer to that final shape. Now, once again, there are pros and cons to using tools like auto freeform or fit surface. There is definitely a benefit to doing a new freeform model manually because you have direct control over where those quads are and how big they are. In the case of auto freeform, it's looking at the overall design as one, and it's not going to put a higher density of quads closer to transitions. It's gonna look at the number of quads overall and try to make them relatively the same size. So when you have a design like this, where we're potentially looking at a change in curvature in three different directions and larger, more flatter areas, this is a design that would probably benefit from doing a manual or new freeform model. But it's always good to play around and understand the tools and their limitations. So as you get to work with your own designs, you can figure out which one works best for you. Now, if you're looking to purchase Quick Surface Lite or Quick Surface Pro, we are an affiliate channel and you can use the code LEAD10 at checkout to save yourself 10%. I'll leave that information and a link to Quick Surface in the description of this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.